Welcome to How Did I Get This Far? Each episode will tackle the basic skills and knowledge that we all completely missed learning. Soon enough, you'll stop having to ask yourself, how did I get this far? On this episode of How Did I Get This Far, we talk about podcasting. Yeah, this is a very meta episode. Ever wonder what it takes to start a podcast? Or maybe you just need help finding them. And if you do start a podcast, how do you get others to hear about it? All that and more right now. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of How Did I Get This Far? If you can hear this, that means I mastered the basic skills of today's topic, which is how to make a podcast. My guest to talk about this is Easton Allen. Hi, Easton. Hi, how's it going? Good. I'm going to read a bit about your resume. So if you're hearing this, time to sit back, grab your snacks. Uh, Easton is the executive producer, writer, and former engineer for the Ryan Seacrest Morning Show on KISS FM. He is also the executive producer at iHeartMedia and podcast engineer for iHeartRadio Podcasts. This includes my favorite podcast, Scrubbing In with Becca Tilly and Tanya Rad. And we can't forget, he is the crowned Caramel Corn Princess of 2019 for Artlight Cinemas. And he got help to get that title from dedicated Scrubbing In podcast listeners like myself. Uh, so clearly, not only does he know the nerdy side of podcasting, but he has the personality to win over listeners. So thank you, Easton, for being here. <laughs> wow. When you hear it read back to you like that, it takes on a whole new meeting. Uh, thank you so much for that <laughs> that flattering resume. <laughs> of course. I mean, it's your resume. It's pretty cool. I'm <laughs> flattered to have you. Uh, I haven't been too involved in podcasting just yet. Uh, but I did meet you at a scrubbing in listener get together that you and your wife, Allison had joined and I shared with you my idea and you guys thought that it was a good idea. And of course I let imposter syndrome get the best of me <laughs> and I didn't work on it until now, but here you are helping me create this. So I appreciate that you really make time for the listeners, um, of the podcast you work on. Hey, without the listeners, the, it's nothing, you know? So, um, I, uh, we always do the show and um, I, I forget that the sound leaves the room uh, a lot of times. <laughs> so, you know, we, we appreciate so much everyone that, that listens to the show, especially the scrubbing in. The, the, the listeners are so passionate and it's so cool to, to meet and talk to all of them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm wearing scrubbing in yeah. merchandise <laughs> as we speak. So I'm, I have I'm that same sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> Which is creepy that I know that. We're going to move on before I get weird. Um, um, obviously, you have a passion for radio, but what connected you into podcasting? You know, uh, I, I've loved uh, radio and especially talk radio since I was a, a little boy. And then um, I got into podcasting uh, in like 2009 when um, I, I'm a big fan of Adam Carolla, who used to be on The Man Show. <laughs> um, and he got... He got, Big throwback. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he got fired from a, a radio station in 2009 and then he started doing a podcast out of his house and I was really um, impressed by it. And I listened to it a lot and uh, I got really pumped on that because uh, when I was like in high school, I, I was really into talk radio, but the only other people I knew that, that liked it were like old men. <laughs> and uh, it's not it wasn't a format that like a lot of young people were into. Um, but then podcasting uh, took on a whole new life, you know, around like 2012 or so. And um I, I was like excited because I'm like, this is, this is what like, like people have been doing this on talk radio for years. This, and this is why it's so cool because it's like long form, um, ideas and, and intimate stories and, and, and stuff like that. And, uh, podcasts, you could do so much more you couldn't do on radio because I mean, there's, there's no time limit. You know, you can say whatever you want, uh, and people can start them from their homes. So that, that's what really attracted me to the, to the format. Yeah, exactly. And my idea for this podcast originally was a YouTube channel idea. And then I realized very on brand, I don't know how to make <laughs> a YouTube channel. So once I heard about podcasting, it seemed like a more accessible way to get my idea out there. Yeah, de definitely. And, uh, you know, YouTube's cool and all, but um, I don't know. I, I, I listen to, at least I listen to podcasts like when I'm in my car or while I'm exercising. Or while I'm do like, I just love that you can get all this information w and do other things at the same time. Like, like that, I don't know. That's, I think that's cool. And that's what I love. It's about definitely it. appealing. And mm -hmm. my goal with this show is to incorporate that idea as well with a YouTube channel. When you're Googling how to's or watching YouTube videos on how to's, it's usually in that moment that you need to know how to do that thing. Mm -hmm. But with the podcast, you can be in your car and randomly have this fact 
uh, that you learned in the podcast that one day it won't be so intimidating because you remember hearing about it on your way to work. Exactly, exactly. You'll have that Slumdog Millionaire moment and you'll remember back to hearing that podcast in the car. 100%. Uh, so obviously whoever's listening to this figured it out, but I know there's different answers. What are the different ways to get access to listen to a podcast? Well, um, for, as far as listening to it, the, the easiest way is, um, Apple invented the term podcasting and, um, cause it was on the iPod. Uh, but since then, now that it's available to like a lot of different platforms, it means personal on-demand broadcasts. That's what podcasting officially means. I'm embarrassed as an <laughs> aspiring podcaster. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but because of that, so Apple uh, on there on the iPhone, it, there's an app I think that comes standard, and it's just the podcast app. And I think that's the easiest way for people to listen. But there's a ton of apps you can get on all kinds of. Uh, you can get on Android, you can get it on uh, Google Play, whatever whatever you want. Uh, but I think that's the easiest way. There's a lot of people that post them on SoundCloud. Um, you can post them uh, on a w just a website and just host the audio somewhere. Uh, but I think the easiest way for people to, to listen is just uh, get on your get on the podcast Apple Podcast and just search for something you're into. The really cool thing about Apple Podcasts that I just learned, you can search things that are said in the episode. You don't have to know like um. Tanya had a question for me. She wanted to know every episode she had mentioned some topic. And I, I was like, oh, man, it's going to take me forever. And then I, you just go on the Apple Podcasts app and just search like Starburst. And it will tell you every podcast that has that mentioned in it. So that's my advice if you want to listen to a podcast. It's on your phone already. <laughs> Perfect. So I should say Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio and so I could get a couple more lessons. Yeah, yeah. Start dropping those keywords. That search engine optimization. <laughs> Uh, so I'd love to play a little game to get us warmed up to talk about how to start a podcast. Okay. Uh, so I've done, well, essentially almost a year's worth of research before I finally started <laughs> and came across a lot of different advice. So we're just going to call this good or bad. You'll tell me if you think this is good advice or bad advice and a little bit of why. Oh, fun. Okay. The first one, good or bad. Audio quality is very important and you should invest in audio equipment before you start recording. Uh, good. Uh, good do, advice. Do, yeah. Do I mean? Do you want me to elaborate? Or do you, is this like a rapid fire kind of thing? We'll go more into it later, but okay. I do want to say how embarrassing it is that you think it's good advice because I'm using the free headphones that come <laughs> with my iPhone. <laughs> it's it's good advice, but it's not it's not required. I think you can, right. Yeah, you, you can you can start a podcast on your phone. It, like you can if you have an iPhone, you can uh, listen to and create your own like with built in software that Apple gives you. So but it, but I mean, it's good advice to, to, ha to have equipment before you get started. OK, the next one. Good or bad. It is better to have a co-host to bounce off of than to do a podcast solo. Good. I, I think being able to host a show by yourself is uh is difficult i'm impressed you're doing it you're doing it very well but if you especially if you don't have a guest uh just sitting there and talking to yourself in a room that is uh it's very difficult um but uh but people do it and they do it well but uh, it's hard to do i think i've had a lot of practice because i talk to myself often so this <laughs> is a breeze to me uh okay last one good or bad the most important aspect of a podcast is its content good Good. It gets great advice because that's what sets you apart because there's, oh man, we, uh, you know, we host a lot of podcasts at iHeartRadio and we always have these like stats that come out. And I think iHeartRadio has 500,000 different podcasts indexed. So that's who you're competing against. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of podcasts out there. Um, and there's a lot that have like only two episodes, but, uh, uh, I, I think, um, you, you really want to have unique, original and, uh, captivating content. So let's dive into that. I believe that it should be considered the first step in making a podcast is to come up with your subject. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is a good way to come up with a subject to get started? Well, um, the advice I always give to people is uh, w when you want to start a podcast, the the initial attractive draw is, um, hey, my, my friends and I are just so like our conversations are so crazy and they're so funny. People do, like we should just record these and like it'll just be me and my friends just like talking about whatever comes to mind. I think that's like the, the absolute worst idea in the world because uh, there's a trillion podcasts that do that, a trillion and they only do like four episodes and they're all bad and they're not funny to anyone besides the person listening. And um, 
you don't have to record that and put it out there for the world to hear because uh, no one probably not that many people are interested in that. Um, it, it, what what I think will uh, help you get listeners and uh, also keep yourself entertained is is the beauty of podcasting is you can be as specific as possible. And so I think you should should be as specific as possible. Like a lot of people make fun of podcasts that do that thing where they're like, we're going to go back and we're going to watch every single Scrubs episode and break it down. And like, that's actually, you know, that, that's a fine, that's a great idea, I think. Um, and if you can get more specific than that, I think the better. Uh, and then it also helps you keep, um, ha- have like a, a, a goal and a focus when you sit down to do your episode, because if it's just you and your friends talking about whatever comes to mind, like you're, you're something's not going to come to mind one day and then you're going to be host. Um, so, uh, so I think when, when you're starting to show the, the best way to do it is, uh, is like, well, okay, what am I, what am I interested in? Uh, what will be fun for me to research and, and talk about? And, uh, you know, how can I make this a P what's a hook that will set me apart from other, other podcasts? Like, uh, I mean, I'm drinking a Topo Chico right now. So like, uh, if you want to review like different kinds of mineral water that, I mean, there's an idea you can call yourself the bubble boys and you can talk about like LaCroix, Topo Chico, uh, uh, stuff like that. So, um, I, I think specific specificity i don't know if that's a word um being as specific as possible it is i just don't think you said it right. yeah <laughs> <laughs> is that that's key that, that's that's the advice i would give if you're trying to come up with like what to talk about that's good advice i thought it would just be think of something that you could talk about for a while or something you know <laughs> a lot about but you got to figure out if it's too much of an inside joke for yeah us. yeah exactly <laughs> Okay, the next question is the one that I dreaded the most, which is a big reason I didn't start, is to know how tech savvy you need to be <laughs> to get started. I don't think you need to be that tech savvy, honestly. The, like, if we really get down to it, I, the iPhone has a voice memos app built in. And if you just put it kind of like, like, you know, like maybe a foot away from your face and you sit in a closet it looks like you're in your closet right now, are you? Or you caught me. I am in a closet. <laughs> yep, that, that's good. I mean, because most people don't have soundproof. Uh, like, I mean, my my side of the audio is probably not going to sound that great because I'm just in my hollow office. I don't have any soundproofing here, but um, most people don't have that. Uh, but everyone, most people have a closet they can at least kind of huddle into and be surrounded by clothes that will deaden the sound. Uh, and if you just talk into your iPhone, that will sound really good, and your iPhone can record for like multiple hours. So that'll be okay. Uh, obviously, if you if you know more about technology and and audio work, um, it will sound better, and therefore people will appreciate it more. But uh, if you have, if you got good content, people will put up with the sound something sound pretty bad, I think, to get to it. But uh, you really there's not that much barrier to entry when it comes to um, technology on this kind of thing. Well, that's very comforting to know, <laughs> even from an expert, that it's not the end of the world if you use your iPhone to make your show. Mm-hmm. What would you say are the next steps? So uh, getting it up onto the internet for people to listen to, that's something that sets a lot of people up, uh, 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 kind of like turns a lot of people off from, from podcasting because I think a lot of people are like, well, if it doesn't show up in the podcast app, then what's the point? You know, it's not real. But, uh, and that, that is kind of tricky to, to get it indexed by Apple and um, get it to be searchable and everything like that. That, that does take some uh, skill, but there's plenty of websites that can teach you how to do that. And there's plenty of websites that will host your audio. Doing it for free or cheap is kind of tricky because, um, you know, there's companies that make money to do this and you need to host it somewhere. That costs money. Uh, but if you're really doing this on the cheap and and you want to go low tech, you can put it on SoundCloud. I forget how much they'll let you host for free. So if you're doing two hour long deep dives into every episode of Desperate Housewives, that's going to be, you know, you're not going to get many episodes in before SoundCloud starts cutting you off and you have to find a different place. But if you're doing like 30 minute episodes, you can, or 10 minute episodes, you can upload on SoundCloud and then post your, post the link on your Instagram or on your Twitter and people can listen to it there. And that's pretty, you know, you can do that in an afternoon. It's really easy. Uh, But getting it on iTunes, that's going to require like generating an RSS feed and submitting it to Apple and, uh, and, and, but there's websites that will teach you how to do that. I've done it a trillion times. Um, I'll teach you how to do it. Uh, but, uh, 
there's there's tutorials you can find to do that kind of thing so i mean that too is pretty easy to get your podcast on the internet when you say hosting site that's just where you submit your audio file and it converts it into something fancy to get it moving throughout the <laughs> interwebs or what, how would you define that? So when you, when you uh, download a podcast with like, if you use the Apple podcast app or if you use another app, like, like I use one called overcast. I really like what that app is doing is looking for a um, what's called an RSS feed and an RSS feed is a link to a server somewhere. A lot of them are in Florida. Uh, it's a computer somewhere that has your audio on it. And whenever you put, whenever you put up a new show, it will update like that link is saying, I'm looking in this spot, whatever's new, I'm going to download it. And, that, and that's how, um, your listeners can get new episodes once they subscribe to you. So, um, you, it, there's services that will host your audio and then create that RSS feed for you. Uh, SoundCloud does it. Um, WordPress does it. There's a ton of, there's a site called Libsyn that I know a lot of people use. That one might be free for a lot of a lot of uh, hours of audio, um, but uh, th that's what a hosting site is. So once you're set up with that, when you record a new episode, you can upload it to whatever service that is, and then uh, your RSS feed will know, like, hey, there's new audio, I'll pull it, and then your listeners can, uh, because they'll be subscribed to that feed, it'll just automatically download. I, I personally have spent a lot of time Googling hosting <laughs> sites yeah. And that is the biggest headache for anyone that wants to start a podcast and doesn't know what they're doing. That part's very intimidating. I've joined Facebook groups for podcasters and 90% of the posts in that group are asking for advice on what hosting site to choose. <laughs> um, I actually got somewhat of a mentor for podcasting through one of those Facebook groups, um, Brad Nolan. He started his own platform called Podcave, which is where awesome. I'll likely post, uh, well, everyone will know by now if that's <laughs> what I'm using to host my podcast. Um, one of the steps that we might have skipped over that isn't the most important, but is an important step to make sure it is in there is the cover art. So I know there are rules for that, but besides the basic guidelines on pixels and everything, what are some other pieces of advice you might have for that? Cover art, uh, that, that's more important than you'd think. I mean, cause that's going to be when people search your podcast for a lot of apps, that's what all you see, it's you know, that's the point. only, and, and it's, it's an audio medium, but like, so that's the only visual component you're really going to have. So it'd be kind of rough to, to, um, assume that someone is only listening to your show because you have good album or cover art. But I do think if you have really janky cover art, it will turn someone off, um, if they're on the fence about it. So, you know, you got to think of it as a first impression. So uh, there's so many ways, like different ways you can do this. Like I, I had a podcast for like six months with um, with one of my coworkers at the radio station. And uh, I would make that I made that cover art on like just a collage app like on my phone. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't know if that helped or hurt, but uh, <laughs> you, you, you can do it really easily or you can like, you know, you can get on um What's one of the Fiverr is one of those sites. Like there's like sites where like you can hire like a graphic designer for like $12 and they'll, they'll make you uh, artwork based on whatever you want. So you can hire a graphic designer to do it. Or if you have any you know skills in that field, you can do it yourself. But um, I had a friend that knew Photoshop. That was my, <laughs> that was my outlet for that. Exactly. So you, you can do it on your own, but like, I think if you can get some cool, like, you know, a cool cart like piece of artwork or something that will grab someone's attention, that, that's going to look so much better than just like, uh, something you make in Microsoft uh, Paint. <laughs> the good old days of Microsoft Paint. Yeah. <laughs> what are some common mistakes with podcasting? Um, let's see. The biggest mistake I think is um, paying, not paying enough attention to the audio quality. And I know I said that you don't need to be an expert for it to sound good, but I think there's a lot of small things people can do that, that make it sound a lot better. And I think not paying attention to those things make a huge difference. Like sitting in your closet versus sitting on the street. Um, that's, that, that, you know, that, that's a bit like where you are. Finally, I got something right yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> like where you are in your, where you record it is a big deal in terms of it sounding good. I saw a tweet once that said uh, a job that doesn't seem to exist, but should is podcast editor. Uh, a lot of people, just do them and, and put them up and that's fine. And, uh, I think it, that's an authentic way to do your podcast, but also, you know, it's not live. 
like like you can you can chop out the part where you like couldn't find your word or um if you like change your mind about what you want to talk about you can chop it out and do it over again uh so i think paying attention to editing is a big mistake people people do um yeah i feel like it's very common for people with podcasts where it's not edited they'll just say well it's raw like we just keep it real and i'm like i can't speak until i start so <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Uh, and you you can still have a raw, authentic feel and, and also chop out the part where you like can't remember what what a word is or something. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, you know, some people, um, you know, it's funny, like like I'm I'm a radio guy. I that's that is my career. And it's like what I got into. And a lot of radio people have a hard time transition because podcasting is a completely different world. And a lot of people have a problem transitioning from one to the other. But something I think that you can take from radio that a lot of podcast people don't is uh, taking a break. And you don't need to, when, when you are podcasting, you don't need to take a break. You can just go for an hour. And then if you, if you're lucky enough to have commercials, you can find places to put them later on. But I do think that in terms of resetting and, you know, kind of like redirecting where the conversation is going to go, or if it's just you by yourself, like kind of like being able to, um, gather your thoughts. I, I I don't think there's anything wrong with being like, Hey, you know, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And then if you don't have any commercials, no one, no one's going to care. They'll, they'll be thrilled. If you don't have any commercials. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> not be afraid of taking a break and then kind of coming back and resetting. Uh, when I'm listening to a podcast, that's not hosted by like a media professional or like a famous person or like a, a broadcaster, I find that what attracts me about them is the lack, not so much what I like about it, but there's, things that I usually hate about podcasts that aren't it there. There's a lack of things I hate versus presence of things that impress me. So, um, let's hear it. <laughs> uh, when you're, when you're, uh, especially if you're hosting a show with your friends, uh, a lot of like reminding, keep reminding yourself to stay like on the topic and remember what the focus is. I think a lot of times it's too easy to like, uh, joke around about like like oh I bet I bet I bet everyone's unsubscribing right now and stuff like that that always drives me crazy oh. when people do that because um, like I, I don't care about it. I feel like that's manifesting that like it's like well if he thinks so I guess yeah exactly and I'm, I'm, and I'm like hey I'm I'm the listener you're talking about and I just want to hear you keep talking about whatever it is I'm downloading it for um, right. oh oh I mean and then just bad editing uh, to go back to it again like like if you're doing a uh, if you have your guests over Skype or Zoom or something and they can't they can't hear you or you talk over each other and you have to go like but that what I well what I was gonna say was <laughs> um uh, and like I'm listening to it going like man you could have just cut right when I was gonna say and I wouldn't have known you had audio problems that's something I learned with recording remotely so with mm -hmm. Zoom there's a way if you just go to preferences and recording you can actually have the audio files separate so that you can edit out when someone spoke over someone and hear just that one person's You'd voice. You'd be surprised how many people don't know that <laughs> and, and, and don't take advantage <laughs> of it. So I'm, I'm very, that's, a, that's really a good move. And I'm very impressed you're doing that because uh, it's going it, to, it'll just. Everyone hear that? Yeah. I was impressive according <laughs> to Easton Allen. So, yeah, that, I mean, that, I guess that's, the, the, I, I'm going to wrap up my thought there. Those are my, uh, the, those are the biggest mistakes people usually make, I think, when they're starting a podcast and they're new to it. Okay, great. So you did mention being able to monetize off of a podcast. Of course, this is very far in the future. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of just aspirational <laughs> questions here. Um, but what are some of the ways that you can make money from podcasts? And even the best podcast, is this something that can be uh, a big source of income? Or is this always going to be a side project? <laughs> um, I think because podcasting is so popular, and there's so many of them, I think people should start a podcast or get into it because they're exploring a topic that they are passionate about or they are interested in broadcasting and they and they like getting to know people or getting to know things through this medium. I think it should be very uh, it should be very self-serving that way um, and I don't think people should expect to make it a career or at least even make you a little bit of money until it's very far down the road. It, it's it's very difficult to make money doing it um, unless you already, if, if you start off with a huge, like if you have a huge following before you start it, you're, you're, you'll be, you'll have a better chance. Um, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like a lot of the podcasts we do at iHeart, like take a long time to make money. Um, 
just because that that's just how the the landscape is. Uh, and, and we have, we have a team of salespeople that can sell commercial. We have commercials like right off the bat and like it still takes a long time to make money. Um, so I think if you're, if you're not, if you're not like a famous person and, uh, you aren't in league with a, uh, network and I, or a, and I, a podcast network or like a broadcasting network that can do that work for you, it's going to be very, very difficult, uh, but there are the thing I think is really cool is there are companies and there are like groups where you can, um, you know, if you if you get you're starting to get a lot of listeners, you're getting like, you know, 10,000 downloads, 5000 downloads uh, a month or, you know, or a week per episode. Uh, you, you can approach companies and be like, hey, these are the cool thing about podcasting is there are like hard stats and data you can provide. So you can be like, hey, I'm getting these these downloads. Can you help me find um, some advertisers? And then they'll go out and sell them for you because that's th- that's hard to do. And I, I don't expect many podcast hosts to be like knocking on Dollar Shave Club's door and, and being like, hey, <laughs> let, let me do, like, you know, usually they'll they'll want to talk to like an ad agency or that kind of thing. Uh, so, that yeah, makes sense. That extra middleman. There. Yeah. So the, I, I, unfortunately, I, I've never done that personally. You know, like, like again, I work for a, a huge radio company that has like teams of people that do that. Uh, so, um, but, but I do know those companies exist that will sell your, your ads for you. Uh, but it's going to take a long time to get to that point. Yeah. I think one of the things for me that, um, I had to overcome in order to get started was reevaluating the reason I was starting. And of course it's very easy to think, oh, everyone's going to see me and hear me. Mm -hmm. And then I was, it was holding me back because that also scared me. People are going to judge me. People are not going to think I'm any good. And then I thought about, again, what made me think of this idea? And it was the idea of something that was always stressful for me, um, a problem I experienced, a problem I know other people have experienced, and an outlet I've created in my mind that I think is a helpful way to help me and help others. And that's what I use now to drive me to get started. That's perfect. And that's a great reason to get into this. And I think you're going to find it to be very fulfilling if you keep following that. Thank you. Thank you so much. What about promoting? So once you have the podcast, what are some ways to help people hear about it and know about it without being super annoying? Um, um, so I, I, you know, you, you can tweet about it and post about it on, fa- on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that, but you're only, you know, especially if you're not already um, a famous person, it's only going to reach, <laughs> you know, it's only going to reach your friends. Um, and they've probably heard everything before <laughs> that, you, that you're saying. Uh, so th- it, th- that is a tough thing to do. Uh, what I recommend is, um, you know, posting on like Reddit or, um, message boards or Facebook groups, like places that have a specified kind of focus, uh, especially if your podcast, if you do have a like specific unique topic, like, um, you know, if you, if you talk about like nineties TV, you can find a Facebook group that you know, like, Hey, I, I just started this podcast. You probably really like it. Um, at least for me personally, I listen to a lot of podcasts and the way I've gotten into them, the, the biggest form of podcast discovery for me is a, is a guest on a podcast I was already listening to. So like the, the, you know, there's, there's a podcast, uh, my, my favorite podcast is called Doughboys and they review chain restaurants and it's, it's my favorite thing in the world. And, uh, I listened to, um, uh, Eliza Skinner uh, is a comedian and she was a guest on there. And that, then she has a podcast called cool playlist where she invites people on and they make playlists for a specific, uh, uh, like, like uh, charging into battle or like playing a football game or something. And I thought that was cool. So now I listen to her podcast and then she had a guest named John Gabris and that guy's super funny too. He has a podcast called high and mighty. So now I listen to his, you know, so like I, there are so many podcasts I listen to because they were a guest on someone else's and they were guests on someone else's. So I know that's hard to do when you're first starting, uh, to get guests. But, um, if you can get your, like, if you can find other friends that are there, have a podcast or, or, um, become a guest on another one, I think that's uh, a great way to get listeners. That's hard to do. And I don't know much advice for, for getting out there that way besides like, just, Hey, slide in those DMS, send emails, find out who the, if there's a podcast you like, find out who the producer is. They're probably dying for content at a certain point. Uh, get on, get in their email, bug them 
and get on those get on those podcasts. I think that's a good way to, to get listeners. That is really good advice. I have yet to do my outreach, but yeah, if anybody wants me as their guest, <laughs> my email is how did I get this far at gmail.com. But I will say I'm very surprised and pleased with um, the positive feedback and the interest from guests I've reached out to, um, including you. So I definitely don't think that should hold anyone back the fear of not being able to get quality guests, because if you have a good idea and you're passionate about it and willing to put in the time, then people are going to want to be a part of it. Exactly. Yeah. Are there any other terms we might have missed or key words when it comes to making a podcast that we shouldn't be surprised will come up upon starting? Let's see. <laughs> RSS feed always trips people up, but I mentioned that already. Um, and that your hosting service, once you choose and get involved with them, will we'll provide that for you. Metadata is something that scares people, and that is something another thing your hosting service will, will help you with, but that's like what tells... Um, it tells podcast apps like what the name of your show is, what the episode title is, what the description is. Is the description, because uh, I know there's like there's show notes, which I feel like people always hear in the podcast yes. is mention of show notes. Is that just basically a summary of what the episode was about? Yeah. You know, the, the show notes um, is a is a little like window i guess when you download an episode and it tells you it's meant to tell you what like what the episode is about and who like who the guest is or what the topic is uh and people can go really crazy with those and i'm always very impressed by that like some people will put like like you can put links to everything you talked about in the episode there so that your listeners can have a, a play you know they don't have to like go to your website or go to your instagram if they want to find a link to something and put it all there People put um, links to their sponsors in there, which is kind of some added value for advertisers. Um, you can make it whatever you want. Or some people just write a sentence, just like, this week we talk about Wendy's. You know, and then, <laughs> uh, so Get it out of the way. Th those links in every podcast app, if you put a link in there, it's clickable. So people can, they'll be on their Apple podcast and they can just click it on their phone and it'll bring you to whatever website or, or whatever it is you're trying to promote or, or reference people to. Yeah, I mean, it worked on me on the Scrubbing In podcast. That's how I got this sweatshirt, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, those are all of my questions. I don't know if you have anything else that you want to share before uh, we close the show. Uh, if, you, if you are interested in starting a podcast, the hardest part is turning on the microphone and talking. And But once you get over that, it's really easy and it's really fun. So if you're afraid of doing it or nervous about what people will think, uh, just do it. And uh, not, you know, not that many people will probably download it right away, so you'll be fine. <laughs> definitely, definitely. The fear of getting started is the biggest step. Once you start that leap, the momentum will keep going and you'll just figure it out. And you'll make mistakes that you couldn't have prepared for that I know I'm about to experience. <laughs> um, but what's great is that this is also, once I've started, it's connected me to other people who have started and are willing to share advice and more specific advice once they've actually become a part of your own project. I'm sure everyone can tell from listening to this that you are an awesome resource and a great person to listen to. So what are some ways people can connect to you? Uh, I guess the, the biggest, the, I'm most active on Instagram and my Instagram handle is at Easton Allen and I respond to every single DM I get because why not? And I really like when people, when people are starting a podcast or they have a podcast, and they want some help. I really, I really like that, that. That's something I, I like. I like talking about that a lot. It's exciting <laughs> for me. So um, please DM me uh, and uh, I'll, I'll help you as much as I can. Yes, I was definitely nervous to actually ask you and you were immediately like, sure, yeah, I'll be your <laughs> guest. And I was very excited. I'm sure every scrubber that's listening is very <laughs> excited <laughs> for a fellow scrubber. Um, so Thank you so much for being a part of this. This was very helpful. I can't wait to see what comes of this podcast. Thanks to your advice. Thank you so much uh, for having me. And I would like to note this, the, the time frame of this episode is perfect. I think this, this is a, a lot of people think they have to do a two hour episode. No, no, no. 30, 35 minutes. That's perfect. <laughs> I think that's plenty. Yeah. So. I, uh, I did a lot of research on how long a podcast should be <laughs> and you should make your episode the length of the commute to work. So uh, it's great advice. Thank you. This is all years worth a year's worth of research. So <laughs> it's it's coming from somewhere. 
<laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Easton. Thank you. If there is a basic task or aspect of life that you cannot grasp, or if you want to learn more about this topic, email howdidigetthisfar at gmail.com and tag at howdidigetthisfarpod on Instagram with your helpful hacks. Finally, please give the podcast a rating and review so the show can continue tackling more struggles. But that's as far as we will get for now. I'm Amanda Ogan. Thanks for listening.